And uh, for this, I would like to invite uh, Henrik Hulker, who is our CTO and co-founder. And, and he will also uh, be supported by Morten Christensen later on, who is our senior uh, principal configuration consultant. They will cover, you know, what are the engineering trends, you know, in the CLM that we are moving on with, what are the trends and what are the functionalities? So, so uh, Henrik will explain what the trends for the, for the CLM in engineering, and then Morten will later on come on and explain, you know, some customer case stories around those trends. So, uh, Henrik, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Shahid. Yes, so uh, as Shahid already has, uh, has presented, we have uh, a two-part uh, session here. I will take the first part where I will uh, try to look at some of the uh, trends that we see out there and how we will uh, we'll try to support those through the, the software that we provide. Mm -hmm. And then Morten Christensen will take on the second part and he will go into a particular case uh, we have been working on uh, where we use a new capabilities that we're bringing to market called a system level configuration capability. So, we work with uh, advisory boards. Uh, Harpreet has uh, presented this process in, the, uh, in these uh, tech sessions. Um, the, uh, the advisory boards are helping us to um, define the overall trends. And based on those trends that we pick up, we will define themes that will, um, where we will try to fill in capabilities to support those trends. Uh, and, and Harpreet has already shown this diagram as well, and there are uh, different elements and different trends that are relevant in the different areas of the CLM circle. I'm going to pick three of these trends today uh, and talk a little bit about those. So the first trend um, is called servitization. It's also sometimes called product as a service. And just like we are getting used to cloud IT, uh, buying uh, IT services as a service instead of buying the software and running it ourselves. That same trend is becoming uh, predominant or is, is coming, catching on uh, as well when it becomes more physical products. Uh, and that's what servitization is about. That is, instead of offering the product to the customer, selling a, f a, a physical product, uh, in this case, it could be something like this little scooter in the center of the slide. Um, instead of selling the product, the manufacturer instead sells the capability of the product, the service. So for the scooter, it could be uh, selling the, the service that you can pick it up on the street and just rent it by the hour. Um, this, this trend is this comes about in, in, for different reasons, and I think it's interesting that the, the, um, the, the overall trend of, um, of, of making sure that our environment is, is being preserved of sustainability actually ties into this uh, uh, trend as well. Because as a manufacturer, you have to understand, if you need to figure out what the carbon footprint of your product is, you need to understand how, of course you need to understand how it gets produced in the first place, how, how much CO2 does that require, but, but typically much more importantly, it would be to understand how your product is being used over the many years that it typically sits out there and, 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 and works for the customer. So you need to take on much more of a responsibility of understanding the usage pattern of that product in order to know how the carbon footprint uh, impact on the environment is gonna be. And servitization is, is sort of goes hand in hand with that because when you are servitizing your products, you are basically taking on the responsibility of, of running them and maintaining them over a, a, a many years period. It also means that you need to um, be able to efficiently, for example, upgrade them over time and, and maintain them over time. So that cost is suddenly a cost that the manufacturer will have to understand in much big, bigger detail and take in, inside. Of course, when you sell products as a service, it affects uh, everything in the CLM circle. It, it affects, of course, the engineering. You need to make sure that you understand and can make products that are, are optimal to, to service and run over the years. But it also affects heavily on the way you, you sell your products and the way you price them. 
So, so we see this trend of surfetization as uh, something that affects not just the engineering area, but also heavily influence how you sell it and how you service it, of course. One of our customers, uh, Signify, are, uh, are definitely going down this path. They are selling lighting systems. It could be for a football stadium, it could be for um, a parking area, or it could be for a highway uh, like here. But they are moving towards, instead of selling the individual uh, luminaires and, and you know, lighting components, they would like to move into selling the uh, putting lights on the streets as a service and basically charging the customer a certain amount per hour per kilometer that they do so. And what's interesting is that once you start doing that, it will open up new business opportunities. You can, for example, imagine that now that Signify is owning these uh, luminaires here, they can put little sensors on them and they can start collecting traffic information and they can sell that as an add-on service to the city that they, uh, that they uh, are lighting up. Next trend, uh, and this is also one of these overarching trends, uh, we call it the digital end-to-end -end experience. It's, it's at the core as well to the CLM circle that we want to make sure that the, the um, the engineering aspect and the sales aspect and, and the other functional areas are linked together. And we have uh, seen a demo already, uh, if you joined the tech room, of how our design automation component for SolidWorks allows you to create uh, logical rules and features within your CAD environment. And once you have done that, you have captured the, you could say, the connection from the logical feature world down to the to the physical CAD environment. Um, once you have that, you can use that in your sales processes. So that will uh, naturally enable a digital end-to-end -end experience since what you sell is aligned with uh, the CAD that you created in the first place. But as well tied into this, we see a strong uh, move towards a much more visual and engaging customer experience. So, as a customer going to a website, I start to experience that I can get a 3D, almost photorealistic rendering of the product as I am configuring it. And that's where our partnership with Unity will play in because that, they are providing exactly that capability and linking that into our configuration engine. But it's also important to understand that these visual assets, they come out of the CAD environment as well. So, that's how you create them in the first place. You take the CAD drawings, you go in and put them into Unity, add some surface and, and other properties on it, and then you can immediately reuse those assets in your engaging visual experience. We also have a tech session on that, presented by Thomas Hase, and uh, he will uh, show you how that can look like. The Third trend that I have uh, presented today, or would present today, is what we call digitalized products. And this is also a fairly broad trend. Uh, and if I uh, zoom in on it a little bit, you can see that it, it, it covers the different aspects that where, where the physical products become more digitalized. And that can, for example, be that you add software components to the physical product. And that certainly is a trend that has happened a lot, not just in cars, but many uh, traditional products, whether it's a ventilator or uh, an oven or whatnot, they all end up having software components and, and little apps that you can turn them on and off from, from your phone, so they are connected to the internet. So traditional products are being software enabled, and that trend uh, is certainly um, a challenge for many manufacturing companies. They need to understand how the software will fit into their product offering, how do they make sure that they get the right products uh, or the right software components within their products. Um, we also see things like service contracts uh, becoming an important aspect, selling as service contracts on top of selling the product or maybe even selling it after the product or you might even sell it on other uh, companies' products um, and managing these service contracts over time. And then we have also a, a capability that we call system configuration. And this is 
a, a very exciting area for us because this is an area where we really have invested a lot recently. Uh, and that's the area that I would like to dig into a little bit more. So system configuration is, well, it almost says uh, in the word that it is the configuration of systems. It is the configuration when you have multiple configurable components that you need to bring together to form a whole system and there are constraints across the components in the system. Uh, and these uh, problems out there uh, range quite a lot in their complexity. We have, I have a couple of examples here. We have the floor heating example. You can imagine that you have uh, uh, some rooms and you need to provide floor heating and depending on the, the sizes of the rooms or the, 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 the tile or the, 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 the floor um, material, there are different constraints that dictate what type of, of heating systems you can put in. Those are a fairly straightforward uh, example. And then they range to super complex, uh, very big rack systems with thousands of components and very, very complicated interrelationships. Uh, inter um, as I said, this is a, a very exciting time for us because we have uh, just released or will very soon release uh, A60 and it comes with system level capabilities. It's a major step forward for us in terms of the type of systems that we now can model. Uh, and we can, can do so with a very powerful configuration engine based on our VT technology. Uh, and this, this allows you to create these configuration models where you can have instances with sub instances and so on and so on. Uh, and you can even define the constraints and I have a little example at the middle here, how you can define a constraint saying that the total power is the sum of uh, all the subcomponents uh, power consumption. And once you have defined these uh, models, of course, you need to, to also create a, a UI for the customer. And, and there's a simple example of a web configurator for, for a REC system here at the bottom. But these can, of course, look very differently and, and will typically look very differently. They will uh, even be 3D uh, fully engaging uh, environments where you can build up these components and these systems. So this uh, was sort of my quick tour of the three areas where we, when you look at our roadmap, that's some of the areas that we are looking into investing and building further capabilities. Uh, and now I would like, like to hand over the uh, Depeche here to, uh, to Morten and he will uh, show us and tell about how a customer of ours have actually used this system capability. Thank you, Henrik. So, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to talk to a little bit to you, or to you about a, a case, an exciting case that we have had. So, together with Vestas, we are already live with a solution where you can go in and do some configuration of, of wind turbines. Um, and those of you who participated last year's uh, CLM Summit might remember the Vestas presentation where uh, Anna Slawersen and um, Dan Christensen presented their solution where you, apart from being able to configure these turbines, actually can do, config, uh, con can do variant ma uh, management, bomb test and validation, advanced costing and faster time to market and, and correct uh, uh, quotations and so on. So this new scenario that, that they wanted to be supported was the fact that the old way of selling these sites are no, no, no longer valid. So the times where uh, a customer came to them and said, well, let's sit together, we have already chosen you, let's sit together and figure out how this site should look. That is not happening anymore. Now they are being invited to bidding rounds where a lot of suppliers are asked for a lot of suggestions to how you can actually populate this site. So they could, for example, say things like, I have this piece of land and I would like to produce some energy. And um, I'm, I would like to have some turbines. I don't know exactly how many I need, um, but, a, but a mix of solar panels might also be okay. It's pretty close to an airport if that has uh, something to, uh, to say. There's a, a maximum on, on how high these turbines can be. And there's also a maximum of how much noise they can, they can generate. And yeah, by the way, there's already 10 turbines out there and I would like them to be part of the new solution as well. So they might to have software updates or something. And then they are, they are going to, to, to these um, uh, vendors and say, please give us uh, three, four, 
five offers on, on how this can be combined. Well, obviously, this demands a pretty massive uh, effort of engineering hours in order to put all these sites together. And while it still, of course, mitigates a lot that you have a solid configurator that can configure each component, there's still a challenge of putting them together and ensuring that the whole site can actually work as it is. So the solution for that was to have A's extended with system label uh, capabilities. And the approach we took was that we enabled people to go in and take their models and stitch them together to a full system. So what you do is uh, you, you, uh, you define the relationships between the, the different models, so that could be a parent-child relationship, and you define how many children is actually allowed to be instantiated in runtime. Of course, this can be controlled by, by, by rules, so that in some cases uh, you can instantiate 10, and in other scenarios you might be able to instantiate more or less. Of course, that brings us a piece of the way in order to do system configuration, but as Henrik just mentioned, it's also necessary to be able to align the information between the instances, and for that we need some system rules between the, uh, between the different models. And we have a range of, of, of system rules uh, available in, in, uh, in ACE now, uh, ranging from mean, max, sum, uh, and the most used of all, of course, the equality. So this, it sounds super simple, and it's also the way the most used uh, simple rule, uh, uh, system rule to, to, to have. So for example, if you have all these components and you're selling a site to Germany, you'd probably want to have all the components to be set on Germany and be restricted by whatever rules uh, is specific to that component in Germany. And the same goes, of course, if you have a voltage that some of the turbines should, uh, should work under, then that would also be through an equality relation. But if you go back to mean and max and sum, for example, so if you take um, a system relation like sum, it can actually go down into different contributors of, of instances. And if, for example, if you would like to have the total sum of, uh, of power that the site can generate, it will go down to the different instances, get the values down there, and put it in the total sum. But having VTIC technology at hand, it actually also works the other way around. So you can go in, set a value on that total sum, and it would automatically spin up new instances for you because it already knows that you need at least five instances of turbines in order to get that sum. And if you are configuring one of the turbines to, for some reason, create less power, then it would maybe instantiate yet another, if that's al allowed by the rules. And all this is 100% data-driven, meaning you don't have to think about when you, when you, um, uh, when you define your end-user UI, you don't have to think about this information flowing from instance to instance. The only job you have is find some way of visualizing that system to the end-user. I admit that could be a difficult task in itself, but you just have to take the information from, uh, from Ace Configure and distribute all the information to whatever way you want to show this system to the user. What Vestas uh, did was they took this functionality, added system relations to, uh, to their, uh, their system, uh, they developed a, a validation a staging method so that they can, could actually validate the system. And then they took the now system-capable VT package and put that live on, on their quotation system. So let's have a look at how the data flows. And this ties pretty well back to Anas' uh, presentation, because also in Vesta's case, and you can see that in, um, uh, in the presentation that that, that Dan and Anna gave, and I really urge you to, if you haven't seen it, please go in and find it on our website. It, it's an excellent uh, presentation. But just like in the previous solution, every technical component is born in the PLM system. That means the engineering rule, the, uh, um, the bumps that can be configured, and the selection rules are all defined in the PLM tool. 
Then everything is synchronized to the workbench that are powered by, uh, by ACE model, where, you, where they can add the system rule tying all the components together. They can also add marketing rules and they can add additional rules to that. And they can even do more components if they need components that for some reason is not in the PLM system. So that could be, for example, if, if you sell support or if you sell some kind of insurance for, 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 for your site, then that might not be born in, in, in PLM because it doesn't necessarily have a bill of material tied to it. When everything is working uh, correct, it's, well, hopefully, it's, it's, uh, it's pushed to validation to ensure that it's working correct. And there we have extended the capabilities to, to also have system level uh, system uh, uh, verification. So there are different tests that, that will test the full system. We also have added something called solution space compare, where you actually can compare the solution space of the released version and the new version so that you can see if your intent is actually also coming up outright when, when it comes to the solution space. Everything is validated against uh, SAP uh, to ensure that the costing and the vendor data is there. When everything is okay, it's is uh, thrown to the uh, configurator that can represent the full site, ensuring correct configurations, fast quotes, and so on. So, just a small summary. Here in Configit, we have always and will continue to keep a close eye on the market trends, as Henrik said. We do that by uh, having customer and partner advisory boards, and we do that to to give the best possible configuration functionality for you guys. But one thing that's very important for me to say is that system level configuration, that's not a roadmap feature. It's actually right there in ACE 6.0. So if you have these uh, needs, if you'd like to configure systems, then please go ahead and, and, and pick it up. Uh, I think you would be quite excited about it. That was basically what I had. <laughs>